Hi everyone, my name is Art Stepanovich. I'm a retired chemistry professor from the State University of New York in a place called Syracuse, New York, where it's cold and snowy and awful, but now I get to live on Kauai, so that's a good thing. So what I'd like to do today is to follow up on studying, which is a really, 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 really important aspect of, of college education, you know, as, as important as going to class and that sort of thing. Uh, and we're gonna talk about studying, when to study, where to study, and how long to study. And uh, hopefully this will get your sort of minds thinking about how important studying is and the fact you really need a plan uh, for studying. So I think if, you, if you've sat into my other two videos, you, you may already know that uh, when you talk about work accomplished, right, and that's sort of what college is all about, accomplishing work. And accomplishing work has to do with the time you spend, how many hours you spend, times the intensity of your focus. So uh, studying is sort of along the same lines. You need to spend an adequate amount of time studying, but you absolutely need to make sure the intensity of the focus is there uh, so that the whole experience, the time, times intensity of focus is gonna give you a positive result. Okay, so again, what we're gonna talk about today is studying when, where, and how long. And the question might be when to study. Obviously, you're in college or will be in college, and a lot of your time is going to be taken up by classes, by laboratory sessions, by field trips, that sort of thing. Uh, but studying needs to get fit in there somehow. And uh, typically, after class or in between classes, you know, you've got an exam next week, so you've got to squeeze in some, some study time. But the, the only recommendation I would have is that avoid late at night. Right, this idea of starting to study at 11, at midnight, one, two, three in the morning, and heaven forbid this concept that students talk about of an all-nighter, you know, spending all night, because your mind is just not really in the right sort of framework. You're not on the right wavelength if you're studying late at night. So find some time when you're bright and alert and ready to go. Uh, so where to study? Okay, that's, that's almost as important as, you know, decision how much you're going to study, how long you're going to study. So where to study? So you really need to find uh, on your campus some isolated spots that are free from confusion, that are free from other students interrupting, and you're away from distractions. So uh, typically people say, well, you know, like go to the library. And I'll talk about this in a minute, but libraries got pluses and minuses. Sometimes you can find a nice quiet place in the campus library. Sometimes there's hundred other people there doing things and talking to one another and that sort of thing. Uh, and then how long to study? Okay, obviously, uh, the, maybe the thought is longer the better, but studying needs to be kind of chopped up into, into short, intense periods of study. And, uh, and there's been a lot of research done on this, there's been studies done, and really you don't want to spend more than about an hour a time, preferably like 50 minutes of studying uh, then take a 10 minute break and then maybe reconvene your studying. But, you know, studying, sitting down and trying to study for four hours, six hours, eight hours is just not going to work. Your head's going to get full of junk and, and things aren't going to work out that well. So that's sort of the when and where and how long to study. Uh, I'd now like to just mention some of you may have read some of the books by Cal Newport. He's had at least two books published. Uh, one says how to. Uh, win it uh, basically how to win at college the other one has to do with how being a straight a student but cal newport and i'm going to read a quote of his cal newport says you should never begin studying without a systemized plan for what you are going to review in what format and how many times so studying is not just a random thing you've got to sit down and say okay i'm going to study a b and c today or in this next hour and then we'll move on to other things. But you need to have a plan. Maybe jot this down on a piece of paper that you're gonna study this, this, and that. Then the question is, in what format? Like, what do you study? Uh, do you study class notes, uh, which, is, which is useful? Uh, sometimes people write it, you know, extensive notes during lecture, and that's a useful place to, to work. Other times, people don't take good notes, and maybe you need to sit down with the textbook for the class, just about every class as a textbook. So do you use your notebook? Do you use a textbook? Uh, other places to, to study is old exams. The professor that's teaching the course probably taught this course, you know, several times before, gave exams before, and sometimes you can get a hold of these exams from other students. And some universities actually keep files full of old exams, so you can study from old exams. But the bottom line is you need to 
identifying you know, the, the things you need to review, what format, and then how many times you're gonna go through this. And some of that is limited by, you're gonna wanna keep your study sessions in the 50 minute, so you can take a 10 minute break and then start over again. But have in mind how many times you're gonna go over the material before you're gonna say, okay, okay, I'm done. So studying, obviously, very, very important. So uh, the, maybe the last thing I wanna cover is where to study. Okay, you can go online and you can get 100 different opinions of where's the best place to study. Uh, some, some are pretty obvious. Uh, you can study in your dorm room, right? In your dormitory, you, you usually have, a, in addition to a bed, you've got a desk in an area where you keep your books in an area where you keep your notes and an area where you might keep, keep your computer. So your dorm room could be an ideal place to study, but, but, and this is a big but, your roommates have a lot to do with how successful you be. If your roommates are gonna be talking to you the whole time you're studying, that doesn't work out well if roommates are coming and going, uh, if roommates are taking cell calls, you know, that sort of thing. So a dorm room could be a good place because it's got all your stuff there, but you're likely to be interrupted. So, so that's something to consider, but sort of work through. Maybe make a deal with your roommate that, hey, on Tuesday night from, you know, 6, six to 8 p.m., I'm gonna be studying, so you get lost and go somewhere else. Uh, in many dormitories, there are common rooms and lounges, like down the hall from your dorm room. There might be a room where there's a table and there's some chairs and you can sit down and have semi-quiet time studying. Again, that might be interrupted by other students coming through and, you know, your roommate might go down there to look for you, et cetera, et cetera. People may use those rooms for, for phone calls, that sort of thing. So common rooms and lounges are a possibility, but need to be relatively isolated. You can't be interrupted. Okay, so probably the single biggest study area that, that people recommend is the campus library. Okay, libraries are usually big facilities and a lot of books. Typically a library will have a big open sort of reading room. And the problem with that is there's probably a lot of places to sit, there's some tables. Problem with that is there could be, you know, 50 or 100 other people in the reading room, not all of them there to study quietly, many of them there to socialize and do other things. So the library can be the best place on campus to study, or it could be the worst place on campus to study. You have to figure that out. Uh, and I, I saw a note online from someone that said, well, if your, your campus is in a community, like a little town or, or a village, they might have like a town or village library. And those are generally much less utilized than campus libraries. So maybe you can walk a half a block to the town library and you have some opportunities there. Uh, some other things on the list, uh, coffee shops. You go, to, you go to Starbucks and sit in the corner and you, know, you get yourself a cup of coffee and you do your studying. Again, the same problem there is there can be times where things are quiet, but many times people go to Starbucks or coffee shops basically to socialize. So there's gonna be noise and there's gonna be interruptions and that sort of thing. And then one other area where you can, and you probably haven't thought of this, is you could study outside. If you go to school somewhere where it's, it's sort of warm most of the year and doesn't snow like Syracuse, New York, uh, sitting outside can be very relaxing. It can be quiet and, it's uh, and, and something to, to worth, worth thinking about. And at least most places in the US, at least in the spring and the fall, you can, you can study outside. Okay, a couple other things just sort of in closing. Where else can you study? Just about every academic building on your campus uh, is open until it's open from early in the morning, open till 10 or 11 o'clock at night. Well, in academic buildings are empty classrooms for, you know, if you go at seven o'clock at night, chances are two thirds of the classroom, three quarters are going to be empty. So you can go sit in the corner of a classroom and, and, and work through or, or a lecture hall, you know, an auditorium, that sort of thing. Uh, many campuses have a student union or a student sort of a commons where students can gather. Again, there might be places within the student union that are quiet, there may be conference rooms, uh, but again, you need to gauge like, how much other activity is going on at the, at the same time. And I should say, getting back to, to libraries being big, loud places, just about every library, big library, has some separate conference rooms. Many academic buildings have conference rooms where faculty have discussions, but you can maybe find quiet, secluded spaces in a library or a bigger space, but you've got you to do a lot of homework. You've got to figure out where these places are. Uh, another one that I, I uncovered online was going in a gym. As it turns out, yeah, the gym, people are there to work out in the gym. And usually when people go to the gym, they go to work out, they don't go to socialize. 
So the gym is relatively free of sort of extraneous, you know, there's noise in the gym, but it's free of extraneous conversations. And people in the gym tend to want to get their workout done and get back out of there. So, you know, spending an hour or so in the gym might be helpful. And then finally, and this is the one that I found the most interesting, just about every dorm has laundry facilities where there's washers and there's dryers. And usually in the basement somewhere, but sometimes there's seats that, you know, people can kind of sit around. And usually folks don't go to congregate or socialize in the laundry. So the laundry is probably a quiet place to do some, some studying. So hopefully to wrap things up, studying is important. You have to have a plan. You have to make sure when you study and you're setting aside time for studying, you need to study this, 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 and this. You need to know what resources you're going to study. You're going to study class notes, textbooks, that sort of thing. Uh, and then uh, hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll be successful. And again, the books by Cal Newport, How to Win at College and Becoming a Straight-A Student are very, very useful. And in closing, just let me say, you need to be creative. You need to basically do your homework. You need to try different options. Try the library, try an academic building, try the gym, try the laundry, see what works. And then if something works, uh, stay